when I first came here, I was very, like, different. Like, I was more angry, more nervous, didn't want to do anything. After all that stress and the people here just stood by your side, supported you whenever you needed them, whenever you needed a chat, and it's, it's changed my life since I came here. Sadly, if you're a young person that is needing to access residential provision in this country, um, you have come from a very traumatic and dysfunctional early life experience. Now, the shapes of those are highly individual um, and can often include, um, you know, abuse or neglect or emotional abuse, or maybe there's domestic violence or parental um, mental health issues or substance abuse or poverty, any combination of these kind of risk factors. And, and young people, um, depending on what's happening to them and at what stages of their development, um, they learn dysfunctional coping mechanisms or dysfunctional behaviours, antisocial behaviours, that they may be then layered with things like perhaps they're on the autistic spectrum or perhaps there are other neurological issues, attention deficit, or they've missed lots of schooling so they're behind with their peers and then their self-esteem is low. And if your self-esteem is low and you don't feel good enough alongside your peers, that shows itself in behaviours. I was looking into research, I was like 2% of young people come into care for antisocial reasons. It's such a small minority of young people do. People come here for different reasons, not just because they have a piece of parents or parents like massive junkies. <laughs> you know, I've worked with young people that have never had a birthday cake uh, or a birthday celebration or young people that have never had their own bedroom and been able to kind of choose the furniture or um, never been to the beach, never had a holiday. They actually never had a childhood and that's what we give them. We give them time to heal, time to have fun, time to have childhood. I have aged and it, it ages you and it's sad because you do lose your childhood, you lose your like, innocence, whatever you want to call it. Um, you age up so much quicker, so which is sad, but it's true. And to have someone empathise with that, having not gone through it themselves, or if they have, then they know exactly what you're going through, is such a powerful tool. There are some categories that you can kind of put together. Autistic spectrum disorder, for example, or uh, harm for sexual behaviour, or child sexual exploitation. But those individual labels are always underpinned by highly individual personal history and how that personal history shows itself in how that young person engages in the world. And then, and then I like that he had a sleepovers and then and I like everyone caring about me. I like my breakfast and my favourite food chicken mother. And me and Becky sing pretty 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 green eyes, pretty green eyes, a girl. There's a sparkle in my eyes. Never had to be alone, never had to be alone. It's alright to cry, and I'll be there to wipe my tears. That was a. Now Becky sang it. I'm gonna live next to that. I grew up where like Tracy Beaker was on the sh was on the you know on the TV and stuff and and it wasn't like that and I even remember like I feel no way about saying that you know I grew up in care care saved my life I'm very very fortunate for it but I remember a, a girl saying to me once she's just like um, I don't care what you say I'm always gonna think of it like Tracy Beaker like so no matter as someone who's coming from like real life experience and I'm telling you I had a great time it wasn't like Tracy Beaker. She'd said, no, 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 screw that. I'm going to think about what I've seen on TV. There is people out there who will see a home, a community like ours, very different to what it really is, you know, and understand things differently, um, which hurts my heart a lot, you know. Um, it does, it's, you know, these boys need yeah. 
people around them that they can see that would be good parents, you know, they can be cared for, they can be loved. They've experienced enough shame <clears throat> and the difficulties as well is like they're children like everybody else. They have mobile phones, they can access stuff, they can read stuff that's being read about them. When there's stuff on the news and there's people objecting to children's home being in their local area, they read that stuff. Well, I'm one of those people who I can block out negative views, but obviously the little girl living here, she's only eight, and I don't want her to start getting negative opinions about it. And I just wanted to let everyone know how positive it is, and it's really safe here. This children's home here is full of four beautiful children who deserve everything. They've already had too much uh, negativity in their lives. Li life's burdens aren't evenly spread. There, there are some very, very young people in this country who are asked to carry far, far too much. And it upsets me when people who don't understand that, who've got no access to the type of challenges that these children have had, speak negatively about them. I think it's important that the media do show both sides. Um, it's not all roses, as we know, but at the same time, there are fantastic successes uh, around the country. Maybe you should ask someone who's lived in a residential home versus assume that it is bad because there's a story or there's a thing that you've seen on an episode of Shameless or something, you know? Have people sit down and have an honest, eye-to-eye -eye conversation about their experiences and I think that's important because I lived it you know you didn't so but I'm telling you my experience was good and that is a detriment to the people who live there and what they did for me I don't think we should put any limits on the on what we would like our children to achieve all of our children who come to us are beautiful talented capable young people in their own right. You can think I'm ugly, you cannot like me, that's okay, because I love me, I think I am beautiful. So my, my aspirations for them in the future is that we give them the right level of support, the right level of guidance, the right level of parenting that every child needs to be able to reach their potential and not think about them as a special subset of children who don't have those needs. What we want for them is everything that you would want for your own child. There can be times where people have negative stereotypes, but we find that if you go out and they actually get to meet the children and they get to understand what we're doing and that it's really just like having another family next door, then it could be a great partnership between the children's homes and the local community. It's not just looking after children. You know, these are children who have very specific needs. They need to be understood and they need to be heard and feel cared for and have all of that kind of encouragement and support. And the way that you do that varies from child to child to child in terms of them being individuals. Different children's homes are doing different things with different groups of young people.